thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 89. It's a fairly long Psalm, 52 verses, written by a man under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by Ethan and Ezra Height. And today I wanted to speak about verse 15, when I got to verse 15, where he spoke about walking in the light of the Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20, said that a tree is known by its fruits. I bring this up because in my own personal life, when I got saved in 1985, I was 19 years old, we were told that you got saved by saying a prayer, accepting Christ, and you were sealed. There was no discipleship, like there was no follow-up a lot of times, how you were living your life. And don't get me wrong, we do have to come to Christ for salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 tells us there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. You have to come to Jesus Christ and Him alone for salvation. But a tree is known by its fruits. It's how we walk in our lives after we come to Christ. That is the evidence that we have been saved. 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 to 7. I encourage you to read those scripture verses. Basically says if we say we are in the light and God in Christ is light. We will not walk in darkness. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to struggle with sin. Because Apostle John who wrote 1 John chapter 1 would later go on and say right after this in 1 John chapter 1 verses 8 to 10. That if we say we are without sin we make God out to be a liar. There will be a struggle with sin. But the evidence of our salvation is that we will have a desire to abstain and fight the sin and walk away from it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses not 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible tells us that God knows his own and that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord should abstain or separate themselves from sin. There needs to be evidence of repentance. There needs to be evidence of a conviction of sin, turning from sin. There's going to be a struggle with sin. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, the scriptures tell us that there's a war within us between our flesh and our spirit. But God knows. But my friends, we have to make our calling and election sure. As 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 tells us, one way you can do this is by examining your life. Do you see yourself wanting to do things God's way more? Abstaining from bad company. Psalm chapter 1 is six verses. Read that psalm. The blessed person is the one who stays away from sinners, but rejoices and finds their comfort and satisfaction in the word of God. My brothers and sisters, we're living in a very dark day. Here in America, it's amazing the things that are going on in our society today. I'm 55 years old, and I say this not to glory in my past or give the devil more glory that he got in my life. But when I was younger, I ran the streets in the inner city where I grew up. I hung out with guys. We did things that were not right. But when I was a kid and you did something wrong, you went to jail. Today, people commit crimes and they're out of jail before the ink is even dry. If we did something wrong growing up and we went to jail and we got home to mom and dad, we wish that we were still in jail, if you know what I mean. Today, there is no consequences for actions. I see people on the news, you see these clips of punching elderly people from behind and knocking them out, sometimes even killing them, and standing over these people and being proud of what they did. We never thought of doing these things. Maybe they went on, I don't know. But when we saw elderly people in our neighborhood growing up, even though we were doing wrong things, there was a respect for the elderly. There was an awe and a reverence for God. Even though we didn't really go to church or if we were told to go to church, um, we weren't walking with the Lord, but there was a reverence for God. There was a respect for the church, for God. Today, the days we're living in right now, God is being thrown out of every institution of public life. We pray for our leaders. I tell everyone to pray for your leaders. We are told in the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, pray for those who are in authority. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17 says, respect the king. We ought to respect those that are in authority. We need to pray for this president we have here in America right now. He has currently spent $8 trillion in more in debt to our nation than, he, than we had before in the last year and a half. 
eight trillion dollars that we have been more enslaved economically. They're passing laws where kids, and I work in the public school system, don't even know whether they are a boy or a girl. When I grew up, I knew which bathroom to go in, but we're teaching our children to walk in darkness because we refuse to follow the light. Heavenly Father, Lord God, have mercy on us. Thank you for all who will see this devotional video today. It is Sunday, providentially speaking. We should get to church, can congregate and commune with other brothers and sisters in accordance with your word. Lord Jesus Christ, in your word, John chapter 8, verse 12, you are the light of the world. Help us to follow you in a world full of darkness. In your name we pray. God bless you all, my friends. Walk in line with the Holy Spirit.